part seven of our simple maze game tutorial in Python. Uh, so for this lesson, what we're going to be doing is adding an enemy to the game. So there's a lot of steps in this, but if you break it down into you know bits and pieces, it's not that complex. Um, so let me show you what the final uh, result's going to look like. Okay, so you can see I still got my player. I've got some enemies wandering around the maze, and I still got my treasure there. So let me just kind of run over here, and you know, hopefully our enemies there aren't too bright. Easy, kind of easy to avoid. We'll fix that in the next tutorial. So I can still get my treasure. Oops. Uh, so you can see there, actually, I got my treasure. So I got my gold, and then I touched the enemy, and I died. Now, we're going to leave it at that. We're just kind of wandering through the concepts, but we could, you know, restart the game or, you know, do stuff like hit points and all that kind of stuff later. Um, so let's take a look at what the code looks like for that. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of go down through the top, from the top. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be using the random module here. So I had to import that first. Um, I put win uh, wn.tracer0 here. Uh, so that makes the game go much, much faster in the initial stages. If I take that out if I get, and I run it, um, we see the whole kind of slow process of the game, which is kind of cool if you're you know getting started. You can see the... The sprites or the turtles appear here, then they jump to their location where they're going to be. Uh, but again, we don't have a huge amount of time in our lives, so I'm gonna, if I use that, then it comes up more or less automatically or pretty quickly. Um, next thing, I changed this a little bit because um, I started adding a lot of images to the game. So I've made a list called images, and they are just the file names. Uh, the files are in the exact same folder as the Python file. And then I iterated through each image. So for each image, we register the shape. And that's just how we get the images into uh, our game. Scrolling down, now we have an enemy. So I have made an enemy class. Okay, And again, uh, basically we can just kind of copy. What I do is I copied the treasure class and then pasted and then just started making changes. Okay, so for my enemy, uh, I decided the enemy was going to start facing left. It didn't matter. I just could have chose left, could have chose right. Um, now, when I first programmed this, I actually just had square. So that's why I had red here. But we don't really need that since we're using the, the, the GIF or GIF, depending on how you want to put it. Uh, I decided to make uh, the enemies worth 25 gold. I haven't added you know, fighting yet, but eventually it will. And so if you kill the enemy, you get 25 gold. And if you... Notice in the game earlier, the enemies have the same motion options that the player does. You have up, down, left, and right. So what I used was the uh, choice method of the random module. So for every enemy has its own direction, and it's got a choice of either up, down, left, or right. Okay, so what I did here was when we move the enemy, if the direction is up, we change our x by 0 because it's not moving left, not moving right. Um, dy is 24 because we're using 24, you know, our icons are all 24 uh, pixels tall by pixels wide. So that keeps everybody on the same grid. So d means delta, which means change. Um, so down is delta y minus 24. Left is delta x minus 24. And we change the shape because, uh, you know, if it faces left, it looks to the left. If it faces right, it looks to the right. And if direction is right, and I just threw this else in there just in case something went wrong, and it'll just sit there and do nothing. So just like before, we need to make sure that when it moves, it's not walking through a wall. So this is the x coordinate that we want to move to. So it's the current x coordinate plus dx, and the y coordinate we want to move to is the current y coordinate plus dy. Okay, so if we're moving up, dy is 24, so that's plus 24 on the y axis. So if those spaces are not in the walls uh, list, then we can go. Okay. However, if there is a wall, what we want our enemy to do is choose a new random direction, up, down, left, or right. Okay. So as soon as it hits a wall, it will go into a different direction at random. Now this is different. Um, in previous versions of the game, we've or previous games I've done, I've always had something like iterate down here for enemy and enemies, enemy move. 
And that, that works pretty well. Um, but what happened was it was just really, really fast. They were just moving way faster than the player could keep up with it. And there's probably other ways to get around this. Uh, but here's the way I did it. This is actually a pretty cool thing to learn. Um, is the on timer method. Okay. So it's part of the turtle module. It's called on timer. And what that does is on timer is it will call a function. Okay, so in this case, move is calling itself after a random interval of 100 to 300 milliseconds. So the speed of the player, or the speed of the enemy, excuse me, changes each time. So from 100 to 300. Of course, the average is 200. Um, but that gets it to move, it makes it look like it's moving a little bit randomly. Uh, and then, of course, you know, when we get around to fighting, we'll have it destroy itself. Now, getting the enemy onto the field is pretty easy uh, because we've used this method here. So I put, I used E for enemy. So I put enemies here, 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 and I think there's one down here, and here. Now I could put, I could put 100 in there, it doesn't matter. Okay. And I've made an enemies list because we have to keep track of them on the list. And in this part here, where I'm setting up the maze, Okay, so once, once we've done one, you can see how these are all very similar. If it's a P, do this. If it's a T, do this. Uh, and if it's an E, uh, append an enemy at the screen X and screen Y coordinates. Okay. And down through here. Now here's very important. This is something we haven't seen before because this is part of the timer thing. So we need to start moving the enemies. So for each enemy, use the turtle modules on timer method. Tell that enemy to move after 250 milliseconds. So that'll come up to here, as we talked about just now. So move, depending on the direction, it'll move, change the shape, okay? Calculate where it wants to move to, check if there's a wall, okay? If there's no wall, go to, go there. If there is a wall, choose a new direction. And then what we have to do, is we have to set the timer again. Timer only works once. You set it, it goes. It's done. But we want it to, every time through the move, every time through move, every time through move, we want it to set it again. So that'll keep the enemies moving. Okay. And then the last thing we needed to add, uh, did we add it in this one or the next one? Ah, so for enemy and enemies, we want to see is there a collision? Okay, so if you recall, we have the isCollision method actually as part of our player class. This is different to some of the other tutorials I've done, uh, but this works out really, really well. And yeah, so isCollision. So it checks the distance. If that distance is less than five, and it will return true. So yeah, I know I'm kind of going through this a little bit fast, but you can rewind or, or pause to read the code. Um, so if there is a collision between the player and the enemy, just print player dies. Later we can add sounds, move the player, you know, redo the level, etc., etc. But we just want to get the, the basic function working. Okay, so that's that. Let's take a look at it one more time. Okay, so there are our enemies. You can watch how they move. You, know, you notice they never just add an intersection turn, okay, because they're programmed to go up, down, left, or right until they hit a wall. So depending on where you start your player, it can either just like, this one's just gonna be moving around in here because there's no chance for it to get out of there. But here, this one could theoretically end up working its way through the maze. And if you let it go long enough, it, it probably would. Okay, so, but, and then as the player, I can roll through. And I notice it's not very smart, it doesn't sense me. We'll talk about that in the next video. And I can get right by it and get my gold. And that is that.